partnership who we are. Um, we're one of uh, three rural areas of opportunity which are officially designated by executive uh, order of the governor. Um, our, our particular region represents 14 counties. That's by far the largest region uh, in the state. And it's simple, our, 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 uh, our, our mission is strictly focused on economic development. Um, we do, uh, to answer your question earlier, uh, Commissioner Gardy, um, we don't necessarily get into tourism very often unless we're directly requested by a, a county or, or a community. Um, we're strictly, uh, we're, we're fixed on recruiting business and industry to come to this region. We're fixed on trying to uh, do asset and inventories of properties and sites and buildings in counties and literally go out and do the recruiting of business and industry to come to these counties. The other mission that we have is to work directly with businesses that are looking to expand or in some cases may be considering leaving uh, or scaling down and try to help them with state and federal resources to be able to do that uh, and also um, tie in uh, state and federal and to some degree local incentives to try to retain those businesses that may be looking to leave. But in particular, those that are looking to expand their job, their job base. Um, one of the things that's a, a value of being part of the rural area of opportunity uh, in terms of your, your annual dues is really looking at the federal and state grants that you're eligible to apply for. Uh, in many cases, those uh, thresholds on matching requirements for those grants, which can often be sometimes prohibitive, um, sometimes those are able to be, in most cases, be waived altogether or significantly reduced in terms of the state and federal matching requirements. On a lot of the federal and state grants and federal grants that uh, Scott ends up uh, being involved in, as well as ourselves, um, you get additional points for being part of the rural area of opportunity. Um, the uh, last thing I would uh, point out there is that being part, uh, on, the, on the board of directors, our, our governing board is comprised, comprised of one elected official from each of the 14 counties. The designated economic development professional for that particular county serves on our board. We also have the utilities that serve on our board in terms of uh, Duke, Ford Power and Light, and each of the electrical cooperatives that represent uh, these various regions. And then we uh, also have state agencies as well as the uh, NEPEC organization so we do kind of cover the whole gamut when you when you look at economic development it's not just about the bricks and mortar a lot of it is it has to do with the uh, the educational facilities and and uh, metrics that we have as well as a range of other uh, other features I did want to the next next I wanted to give you the tangible benefits and these are direct these are direct returns back to Bradford County I could certainly go into the regional benefits, uh, but a lot of times our counties are really interested in earning and, and looking at the tangible benefits back to Bradford County. You can see over the, since January of 2015, uh, your dues are roughly about $2,273 a year to be a member of the partnership. For the last two years, you all have also invested in something that we have provided to uh, at least three other counties, tiered services, which are some extra services that we can go in and help you, you all with. And I'll talk about one of those examples here in a minute. Uh, but basically, you can look since 2015, uh, we're looking at roughly a little over 28,000 in terms of the tiered services as well as your dues. The technical assistance, I want to point out, that also includes, uh, at $75 an hour, absolutely also includes all of our technology, our travel, and things of that nature. So that's not just a $75 an hour professional fee, that includes travel. You can see the number of hours that we've spent um, in Bradford County to date. One of the major, uh, two major things that we've done with regard to the new monies available through the Florida Jobs Growth Grant Program at the state level, we were working hand in hand with the your staff as well as some folks over at Keystone Heights Airport to put in a Florida Job Growth Grant program roughly around $3 million. It was not funded in 2017. We did some revisions to it. It's being considered right now at the state level. Hopefully um, we're putting enough pressure on them, if you will, to show the need and the value and what the return on that investment would be. So we've, we've uh, done some tweaking on that again and re grant and resubmitted. The other thing we did uh, upon request of the board was to do the economic impact analysis on the RV park that was done here. So we provided some kind of objective criteria and uh, return on that, that investment. Um, the example I was going to provide is that we've also come over and we started to work very closely with your, your development authority. And uh, that's been a, a great relationship to this point. I think many of y'all are aware of the event we're going to have 
I guess we're going to be more than a bit. It's going to be an all-day working or half-day working session on doing a SWOT analysis for the entire county on October 17th here. We're working hand-in-hand -hand with them on that. Also did a, a really on-the-ground tour of our inventory of all your buildings and sites that are available. Um, you see that uh, item that says strategic sites inventory. Mm -hmm. That's a program that we did for each of our 14 counties. I think many of y'all have seen the report, but basically we came up with about 17 priority sites in Bradford County that we ought to be looking to try to um, do some more due diligence on in terms of getting uh, whether they're, they're uh, the assets that can support that, be it the infrastructure, be it are there any environmental considerations that have to be addressed before we can really promote that site for development. And so uh, that's, uh, that's something that was uh, done in cooperation with uh, a DEO grant. Um, the other thing that I would say is that your county has been in particular, I think, taking advantage of the scholarships that we provide directly to not only your elected body and your staff, but folks that are involved in your community on economic development. And those grants have uh, funded, those scholarships have funded attendance at our Rural Economic Development Summit. And let me just put a shameless plug in on that right now, scheduled for October 24th through the 26th this year down in Kissimmee. Uh, many of your commissioners have had an opportunity to attend that, I think gained great value out of that. Also has funded the development of a one-day economic development academy, uh, this kind of an economic development 101 course um, that we actually uh, update uh, every two years. And so we'll be rolling that out again in uh, November or December of this year. Uh, two other things I guess I'd just highlight is the Experience North Florida event that we've been able to coordinate for the last four years. Um, that's where we bring in. Uh, anywhere from 8 to 12 site location consultants. These are people that represent tens of hundreds of businesses around the country to kind of showcase our region, showcase our sites, and try to get them involved in looking at how their clients may or may not want to relocate to Florida. Um, next slide. Um, these are projects we've already got confirmed for funding going into this 18-19 uh, year. Uh, we're really excited about the the uh, regional workforce evaluation assessment and the strategic planning. Uh, we try to do that about every three to five years on the strategic planning side, but we partnered with three of our regional, to date, three of our regional career source boards. They're gonna be funding that uh, part of the project. NFEDP is putting in an additional 40,000 out of our, our uh, budget to, to fund the rest of it, basically to do a county by county assessment of the, of the workforce. Um, you know, I, I think it kind of goes back and forth. The two biggest mm -hmm. differentiators on whether we get a project or not, a lot of times are the infrastructure that we have to be able to support that project. It's turning in more and more. It's all about workforce now. We've got to have the talent to be able to support. It's not just about that four-year degree talent. It's about those middle skill jobs. It's about those even lower skill jobs that might be paying 12 to $15 an hour. So we're going to be doing a county by county workforce assessment. Obviously, this is going to be of great value to the entire region, but each county is going to have that kind of snapshot of their workforce in particular. And so when we look at our workforce as well, we're looking at uh, not just Bradford County, but if Bradford County, Union County, Putnam County are looking to maybe get a regional size project, they have a regional size workforce to be able to support that. So we're really excited about that. The people that will be conducting that are some real world site location consultants, uh, Vision First Advisors, former uh, President and CEO of Enterprise Florida, Grace Swope and his team is going to be conducting that uh, study. We also, and I'll, I must point out the talents of my lady out, which I'll see that you always refer to her as the lady in the hat, but Diane Scholes, who actually just recently completed and we just got secured a USDA grant and a roughly $101,000 to look at small business marketing. And so we're going to be doing an inventory from county to county about small businesses. And this is kind of in partnership with Small Business Administration as well. Uh, also going to be able to upgrade the NFEDP website to go to a much more digitized version of our website as opposed to real text driven uh, in, this, in this day and age. The video, the digital, the marketing has to be done in that regard. And then the last point I'd point out is the uh, local co-op marketing project. I know Rachel and her team was able to get $10,000 a year ago. Um, again, we are in line to get uh, another each county being able to apply to $10,000 specific to marketing. I don't know if that would be something that mm -hmm. now your county would apply for, for our, uh, or the Bradford County Development Authority or the Chamber. 
but at the end of the day, it's almost a guaranteed ten thousand dollars. And that's not a, a typo that you have in front of you, the Putnam County piece. But that's something that they recently did, um, and basically, it was they used that ten thousand dollar grant to really pick out a current spec building that they have and develop a marketing piece of, uh, surrounding that. And so I thought it was very well done. Uh, kind of, that's kind of quick and dirty off our printer, but it also gave some quick facts about Putnam County. Well, I, I would tell you that it's still highly confidential and it, it may or may not be that property, but um, it's already had some really high ticks in terms of um, live folks requesting information on that. So as opposed to a kind of broader marketing piece, a lot of our counties are moving to using that eight to $10,000 to pick out whatever their priority best site is, get the facts associated with it, get some aerial photography, provide some digital access to that on our website and their website, and then market that to site consultants. So I just thought that was uh, something very interesting. I would tell you that all three of these projects where they're gonna have a regional benefit, certainly for, for our team, um, each one of them is going to have a county by county value, and so I just uh, would encourage you to, to um, consider that. Um, wanted to show you our operating budget. It's all transparent. Um, I'll tell you that uh, you, you can look at the numbers. Um, the local government or local partners, if you will, is only about 19% of our budget. We go out and raise the other through private corporate, corporate donations from our utilities, our co-ops, other businesses that are looking to utilize our services. Also, um, we have a dollar for dollar match with the Department of Economic Opportunity. That's the 150,000 that you see up there. Um, that that grant is on an annual basis, but we have to generate the $150,000 in match to get dollar for dollar match. So um, you can see that that uh, is at roughly about 20% or 19. If you go to the next piece, you'll look at our uh, operating expenses. Uh, I, would, I would just tell you, and I want to share with y'all because I think it's deserving to be shared. Um, we look at the $180,000 staffing that we provide to the organization. One thing I'd like you to keep in mind, that's 14 counties. That's a lot of windshield time, a lot of in-staff time. The other thing is that pays for all of about six staff people, from a market and graphic designer to Diana, myself, to the financial uh, infrastructure engine behind that keeps the organization rolling in all of our travel, all of our rent, all of our utilities, all your telecom. So that's not $180,000 that you're just throwing down the black hole, or I should say the region is, it's paying for a whole lot. Um, as you can see, uh, we hope to always carry forward dollars, um, but again, out of that 192, we're already taking 40 of that and reinvesting that into the uh, strategic plan and workforce uh, development uh, strategic plan. Uh, in closing, I guess I would say that um, you know I'm, I'm here to request certainly your participation in the Royal Area of Opportunity, which is an annual dues of $2,273, and that figure is derived from the per capita in, uh, per capita population in Bradford County at 10 cents per per capita. So uh, we use the um, uh, legislative economic uh, economic and development research uh, official numbers. And then we are here to um, uh, see and encourage you to continue your tiered services. I think we've um, put in a lot of sweat equity that I think is going to return some investment in terms of real projects, real jobs. Soon, as I like to tell a lot of our counties that we work with, um, and, and people can uh, take this for what it is, it's a marathon. Um, we may step into two or three projects right away. It may be another year or two years before we get a project that might be 20 jobs, but at the end of the day, this is about preparing the field uh, for the folks that are looking to come in and expand. I will tell you that our region is exploding in growth. It's inevitably going to uh, reach each and every one of our counties, and it's been a privilege and an honor to work for you guys. We're looking forward to the event on October the 17th where we kind of dig in and look at the target industries, look at the uh, strengths, weaknesses, and challenges that Bradford has, um, and putting together some specific marketing plans for this community. So with that said, I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Questions? I'd just like to say thank you for the work you've been doing for us. I've been able to meet you with you, and I know that there's some good things coming down the line. Appreciate it. Thank you. Those comments. I appreciate your work. Being a part of those uh, 
discussions and looking you know forward to the uh, strategic planning session i think that's really uh, i think we've got a lot of momentum absolutely we need a lot of things that, that you mentioned infrastructure and uh, mr coons mentioned uh, grants and things like that that we uh, you know hope to uh, you know get those tools that we need in our toolbox to be able to move forward so. well i would i would share this with the folks in the audience um and you as well and your staff i mean Bradford County sits on a tremendous amount of assets from an economic development standpoint. Your proximity to the Jacksonville Port, your, uh, your rail that you have here, um, good, bad, or indifferent, I don't know where folks sit in the room, but that, that bypass over there is going to open up a heck of a lot. And to be smart about how you do that is going to be critical. Um, but you also have access to the University of Florida. you got a great, in my opinion, Technical school, Bradford Union County Technical School, Technical School, and those middle skills, those lower skills that are focused on healthcare, manufacturing, and whatever the strategic planning session reveals to us on the specific target industries, y'all ought to be focused on. You look at your CDL and your trucking industry here. Let me tell you something. Um, there are people around this state, and I mean literally in other big urban areas that would treasure the assets that y'all have. And so your proximity to interstate, uh, but there's some, there's some challenges we got to address as well, but in terms of having a foundational list of assets that are real world, people are very interested in those, and I, I applaud you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 10, County 